Hi, I'm Katia from Rainbow Reiki Energy, and I'm really excited to share this course with you. The whole thing is based on the goddess Inanna, um, and her story was one of the first stories ever recorded back in ancient Sumer. They wrote this story on some stone tablets. And the basic premise of the story is that Inanna was the queen of heaven and earth, and she traveled down into the underworld to see her sister. And when she was in the underworld, she died and she went through a really intense rebirth. She discovered more about herself and she was empowered by her um, insights and the new things that she understood about herself and about life in general. And then she came back up from the underworld. And as women, we go through this often. We go through phases where we're in an underworld time of life. It could be with um, small things that don't go our way on a particular day, or it could be a season of difficult things. One of my favorite things in thinking about the hero's journey and the heroine or the goddess's journey is that the hero often travels away from home, out into the world, um, and discovers something about himself, possibly conquers something, and then comes home. So he goes on a physical journey, but the goddess or the heroine goes within herself. and she meets a new version of herself and she emerges more complete and more herself. And that's the inspiration for this course, emerging more complete and more yourself and letting go of whatever you need to and being reborn in the heart of the underworld. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Inanna. So when she decided to go to the underworld, she put on all her favorite things, all of her me, all of her um, possessions. Before she set out for the underworld, she asked her support, her advisor, Ninjabar, to come and look for her in the event that she didn't return. She had some kind of premonition that something might go wrong going to the underworld. Let's be honest, most of the time when people go to the underworld, they don't return. So. She said, if something goes wrong, get help. She told Ninjabar who to ask for help, who to go to. And then she set off for the underworld. When she got to the gate, she knocked loudly and she called out so that someone would come open the gate for her. And Neti, the gatekeeper, answered and he said, what are you doing? Like, why do you want to go on this road that no one returns from? What makes you think that this is a good idea? And she says that it's because the queen of the underworld is her sister, Ershkigal. And Ershkigal's husband, Gugulana, the bull of heaven, has died. And so Inanna basically wants to go and pay her respects and support her sister in this difficult time, which sounds really nice. <laughs> and so Neti says, mm, I have to check on that. And he goes down to the underworld and asks Ershkigal. And she's, he says, Inanna's here and she wants to come see you. And Ershkigal kind of thinks about it and she ponders a little bit. She, it seems like she's not totally sure she wants to see Inanna. But eventually she says, okay, lock all of the gates coming down to the underworld. As Inanna enters each one, remove her royal garments. She must enter the underworld bowed low. So on his way back up, Neti bolted all of the gates. When Inanna entered the first gate, he took her royal crown and Inanna said, what are you doing? And he said, the ways of the underworld are perfect and they cannot be questioned. And when they entered the second gate, he took a small string of lapis beads from her neck. Inanna asked the same question and again he answered, the ways of the underworld are perfect and cannot be questioned. When they entered the third gate, he took a double strand of beads from her breast and they went through the same questions. At the fourth gate, he removed a breastplate from her chest. At the fifth gate, he removed a gold ring from her wrist. At the sixth gate, he removed a lapis measuring rod from her hand. And at the seventh gate, he took her royal robe. Um, I'm gonna pause the story for just a second to point out that there are seven gates and seven chakras. Many people say that they're related. Now that Neti had taken all of Inanna's royal garments, she was totally naked. She entered the underworld bowed low. And when she came in, Ershkigal and the judges of the underworld surrounded her and judged her. <laughs> and Ershkigal set the eye of death on Inanna. Inanna was turned into a corpse. She was just a rotting hunk of meat, and they hung her from a meat hook on the wall, which is the lowest of the low. 
And I think most people can relate to having some kind of meat hook moment where you're just so lost and broken and you think that it cannot be fixed and it cannot be um, righted. But after three days and nights, Ninjibar, Inanna's servant, sounded the alarm. First she went to Father Enlil, which is Inanna's father, but he said he would not help because she should have known not to go to the underworld. No one returns from the underworld. Then she visited Father Nana, and he also said no, it's not smart to go to the underworld and she must pay the price. And next Ninjibar went to Eridu, and he um, took pity on Inanna and he said, how could this happen? And from under his fingernail, he pulled out some dirt and he created two creatures called the Galater and the Kurgara. He gave the food of life to the Kurgara and the water of life to the Galater. And he told them to enter the underworld like flies and go through the gates all the way down to Inanna. But he actually sent them to see Ershkigal. He said, she'll be there crying and kind of wreathing and screaming, oh, my insides, oh, my outsides, and said that they must listen to her. And then she would offer them a gift. And at that time, they were to ask for Inanna's corpse and sprinkle the water of life and the food of life onto her corpse so that she can be brought back to life. And they followed his directions. And when they got to the underworld, just as he said, Ershkigal was screaming, oh, my insides, and they, also screamed, oh, your insides. And she said, oh, my outsides. And they said, oh, your outsides. And they listened to every part of her story and just held space for her in her dark moment of loss of her husband. And when she finally kind of recovered, she said, who are you? And what do you, you know, why do you care? What are you doing here? And she said, if, if you're gods, I will bless you. And if you're mortals, I will give you a gift. And she offered them several gifts and they said, nah, we don't wish for that. And after a while she said, okay, so what do you want then? And they said, we'll take that corpse over there hanging from the wall. And she said, that corpse belongs to Inanna. And they said, we don't care. We'll take whoever it is. We want that corpse. So the Kurgar sprinkled the food of life and the Galater sprinkled the water of life. And Inanna came back to life. And she was kind of thinking, phew, I made it. But the judges of the underworld grabbed her and they said, no one leaves the underworld unmarked. If you think you're gonna leave, you must send someone in your place. So as she ascended from the underworld through the seven gates, gathering her royal garments, Gala or the Gala or demons of the underworld clung to her all the way back up to earth. And when they got to the top gate, Ninjabar was there and she was so happy to see Inanna, but then she saw all the demons surrounding her and she fell at Inanna's feet and the demon said, okay, we'll take Ninjabar. And Inanna said, no way, she is my constant support. She, I need her, you can't take her. And so they said, okay, keep going, walk on. We'll accompany you to Uma. When they got to Uma, Shara, Inanna's son, threw himself at her feet and the demon said, okay, we'll take him. And she said, no, no, he's my beloved son. You can't have him, not Shara. He sings me hymns and he trims my nails and brushes my hair. So they said, okay, keep going. We'll accompany you to Bad Tabira. And the same thing happened with Inanna's other son, Lulal. He threw himself at her feet and the um, demon said, okay, we'll take him. And she said, no, no, not my other precious son, the leader among men, my left arm and my right arm. I could never give him to you. In Uruk, they went to a big apple tree and there was Inanna's husband. Dumuzi was seated on his throne and he did not move a muscle when he saw Inanna. And the Gala said, okay, we'll take him. And they broke his pipe and broke his churns of milk and grabbed his arms and legs. And Inanna didn't mind because he had not come looking for her. He did not help. So Inanna set the eye of death on him and the Gala kind of beat him first and he wailed and cried. And Dumuzi called out to the god Utu and he said, you're a merciful and just god. Change my hands to the hands of a snake. Change my feet to the feet of a snake so that I can slither away from these demons. And the god took pity on him and transformed his hands and feet so that he could get away. So in the end, Ninshabar saved Inanna from the Eye of Death, which was cast upon her by her sister Ershkigal in the underworld. And then the two fly-like creatures came and saved her with the food and water of life. And then she came back up through the seven gates 
gathering her royal garments and went back to her husband, who was taken by demons and transformed into someone with hands and feet of a snake. <laughs> This course is going to be all about that rebirth and reclaiming what's rightfully yours, taking back your most authentic self, remembering your deepest, truest self and the things that she loves and the things that make her who she is, make you who you are. Let's do it.